How on earth can you put a number to uncertainty, to something that you don't know? Well, the answer is a probability distribution function, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Let's imagine, for a start, um, that there is some number that you don't know much about. If you know nothing at all, then uncertainty is meaningless. If the number could have any value from minus infinity to plus infinity, you can't say anything. But generally speaking, even if you don't know a precise number, you usually know something about it. And that's what a probability distribution function encapsulates. Let's say we have an integer variable, something that is 1, 2, 3, but not 2.7, for example, the number of elephants in this room. You don't have two and a half elephants in the room. For this, you'd simply say, what are the possibilities? You know, one elephant, there might be a 30% chance of that. Two elephants, there might be a 15% chance. Three, four, etc. So for integer variables, it's very straightforward. You, you just list all the possibilities and the percentage chance of each of these possibilities, and that gives you the uncertainty. But what about continuous variables? Continuous variables, like you know, the mass of an object, the braking strain, the voltage, the distance, they're not integers. Something can be 1.37492 metres away from you. So what do you do in a situation like this? Well, you can't just list the possibilities and their percentages because any possibility is going to have an infinitesimally small chance of happening. What's the odd that something is exactly 2 metres and not 2.0000001 metres away? Zero. Um, what you need to do is have some way of working out a range of numbers. So then we get to the concept of the probability distribution function, which applies to continuous variables. What you can do is plot the range of some variable, let's call it x, against the probability. Now, the probability distribution function will be some sort of graph. If you know nothing whatsoever about what x is, then the graph will look something like this. There's an equal probability of it having any value at all from minus infinity down that end to plus infinity up this end. That's not a very normal situation. Let's say instead you knew that the value of x was somewhere between your 1 and 3. Then your probability distribution function might look something like this. That's x equals 1 x equals 3, and what this is telling us is that there is no chance of having a value lower than 1 or more than 3, but between 1 and 3 there is a uniform chance. Let's try something a bit more complicated, or oh, I don't know, let's something like what is this telling us? If we had a probability distribution function like this, it's telling us there's no possibility of having a value lower than that or higher than that. There is a low probability of being something like here and a rather high probability of being somewhere over there. Now, how do you use a probability distribution function like this? Take the purple curve. What, for example, given this curve, is the odds of getting a value that's less than 1? That is just the area here. Or what are the odds of having a value between you know, more than three? In that case, it's the area over here. Or the odds of having a value between one and a half and two and a half? That'll be the area here. So in general, you can't ask what the probability of getting exactly a particular number is. Well, you can. The answer is always zero. What you do have to ask is, what are the odds that a number lies in a particular range? More than this, less than this, between this and this. And then it's just the area under your probability distribution function over that range of x values. 
So to conclude, for a continuous variable, if there's some uncertainty, but not total uncertainty, you know something about it but not the exact value, you will use a probability distribution function. Um, this might have a variety of shapes, we'll talk about that later. Once you know the probability distribution function, you can ask what are the odds of a number coming in a particular range by working out the area under the curve in that range.